Good afternoon, everybody. Um, well, first and foremost, I'm a native Houstonian. Um, I'm also a gay man, and I don't have a copy of the gay agenda. So if the people who are opposed to the ordinance would provide me with one, um, it would make my day-to-day -day life probably go a little easier. Um, as a native Houstonian, my agenda is pretty much the same as most Houstonians. I work my job, I pay my bills, I pay my taxes, which I'm not always happy about. Um, and every now and again, I like to go out to dinner with my husband whenever we get the chance to do that. I also want to make sure that my family and friends are protected and get to enjoy all the things the city of Houston has to offer. Um, what you're hearing a lot of is that this is a solution to a problem that doesn't exist in Houston. Um, it's difficult to quantify when discrimination happens since there's nowhere for us to report discrimination. If someone's discriminated against right now, they really don't have a recourse to report that discrimination. So this ordinance would provide that, and then we can actually start seeing how much discrimination is actually taking place in the city of Houston. On top of that, the University of Houston, Rice University, the Houston Community College System, San Jack College, um, the Thurgood Marshall School of Law, TSU, all have comprehensive non-discrimination policies in place. So already in the city of Houston, you have microcosms of organizations with bathrooms, by the way, that protect LGBT people. And the bathroom argument is a non-starter. The concerns that are being raised, they don't exist. There are no reports of sexual assault in relation to non-discrimination ordinances being implemented. Um, some people who have spoken against this ordinance, but the end. Thank you, Councilmember Boykins. <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember Boykins. Brad, you did good. Thank you for coming down. Yeah, thank you.